All right, I'm uh, Kent Graziano. For those of you in the hallway, I'm going to talk about an innovation from with uh, Data Vault 2.0, which is a uh, data warehouse modeling and architecture that you may or may not be familiar with. But there's a cool thing that they came out with using MD5 hashes for facilitating change data capture in a warehouse, and kind of blew my mind. So I'm going to share it with you guys. So there's a definition. I will post the slides later in the interest of time on what the heck Data Vault is. It's, I'll say it's a modeling technique created by a man by the name of Dan Lindstedt in oh, 2000. So it's been around for about 15 years now. I've been using it for about 10. So the next evolution was Data Vault 2.0 because everything's got to have a 2.0, right? So what was the difference? In 2.0, they changed some of the modeling structures and tried to adapt this data warehouse modeling technique to work with, to be able to work with NoSQL databases and things of that nature, um, make it CMMI compatible and a whole bunch of other kind of boring stuff. So the fun part though, is what we did is in the structures within the data vault components, we replaced surrogate keys with MD5 hash calculated keys. Uh, one thing that allowed us to do is to load things in parallel rather than having to wait for a sequence to populate and then go populate a child table that was dependent on the parent table. In the case of Data Vault, we have hubs with satellites hanging off of them and the hub had to be populated before the satellite. With hash keys, we can calculate them on the fly. And that's kind of cool. The really cool thing that I'm going to talk up to you guys about is the MD5 diff. We actually have put an attribute in all of the tables that are doing change data capture so that we can do comparisons on one column instead of all the columns. So think about a type 2 slowly changing dimension. What do you normally do? You take a look at the attributes coming in from your source and you compare them to the attributes in your target. So we'll just keep it simple, think about a type 2 dimension. So if you've got 10, 20, 30, 100 columns, however many there are, You've got to look at each one of those and compare them. A equals A, B equals B. Oh, there's one that's different. Now I write the row. With this approach, we can go, we're going to concatenate all of those attributes together into a single MD5 hash so that all we have to compare is one 32-bit string to another. No matter how big or how wide your table is, the performance is going to be the same on that comparison. Number of rows, well, that's normal. That doesn't make a difference. You're still going to pay for that, right? But instead of having to compare through 20, 30, 40, 50 attributes, you only have to compare one. So, so it doesn't matter how many columns there are in your source and your target table, still only going to compare one. So here's how we do it in Oracle land, because this is an Oracle conference, right? So here it is where you, we found we had to do a raw to hex call to standardize some things, and sys a syscall, a util raw, cast to raw, using the DBMS obfuscation toolkit, which is actually in Enterprise Edition of Oracle. It doesn't cost you anything extra, right? It's not part of the super uber advanced security option, but it is there. And we're going to call the MD5, send it the input string, and put it together. Now, one of the big objections to this, which uh, is happening all the time, is well, what about duplicates? You know, if you're hashing all this stuff together, what's the odds of getting a duplicate? And I'll pull up a screen here in a second to show you the, the, the math on that because it turns out this, well, last evening in Hamburg, there's a conference going all call, called the Data Model Zone, and Dan was actually presenting on this topic, and somebody actually tweeted his slide this morning. So I'm going to pull that up for you. But the way we did, found that we had to minimize duplicates was if you take a look at those numbers, 1, 2, concatenated with 3, concatenated with 4, 5, when you run the MD5 algorithm on it, is exactly the same result as 1, concatenated with 2, concatenated with 3, 4, 5. Because all it's doing is a character translation. And we actually had that happen in one of our test cases. Our very first run through, we got a duplicate, and we discovered, well, we can't just put them all together. We have to put a separator between them. So we ended up, we were going to do vertical bar, but we ended up using a caret. And that also helps us with nulls, because imagine if you had 10 columns that were optional in your source, and they're all null. You concatenate all those together, and then MD5 that, 
it gets exactly the same result. Six columns, five columns, doesn't matter. It's always gonna end up the same and you will end up with duplicates. But if you put a caret between each one, even if it's null, well now you're encoding the caret. So is it five carats in a row or three carats in a row and two carats in a row? Those actually come out different. And so it helped us eliminate the duplicates by doing that. So we had to standardize. You know, to, to reduce and make it consistent, we had to do some data type conversions as well. So numbers, n varchar, n varchar, n car, we do a two, two car on. If it was a raw, we did an encode base 64. If it was a date, we did a two char and converted it. If it was a time, we did a two char and converted it. So everything is now converted to chars before it becomes, before it's encoded. And then when it gets encoded, we put the uh, separators between it. And then we also did some things like uppers. When we're doing uh, some of the calculations, we actually did uppers on it and did trims to get rid of white space. And so this is actual code out of, uh, out of one of our algorithms that comes out. As you can see, we did upper trim on a column, concatenate that with a caret, another upper trim on a two char to string them out because that was a numeric column, so we did two char on it, and then another upper trim, and another upper trim. And then we always ended it with a caret. And so far, no dupes. When we didn't do those carrots, we got dupes all the time. So, the MD5 hash, if you're using the standard ones, an MD5 hash algorithm is consistent across platforms. So now you can talk about trying to do that federated data warehouse stuff and compare things that are in MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, or even on Hadoop. And if you have the same set of attributes and you encode them the way I just showed you, they'll actually get a consistent result between the two. So you can actually do the comparisons. You change your multi-column compares to a single column compare. All the compares are then gonna take the same amount of time. It's the same size, no matter how big it is. Uh, you can use this with any data warehouse architecture. It is not specific, specific to Data Vault. I learned it through the Data Vault mechanisms, but obviously you can use this for type two slowly changing dimensions. You can use it for big, wide, flat tables. Doesn't matter. Anything you're trying to do, change data capture with, you can use this for comparison. Uh, almost no limit. And because it is a standardized thing, you can actually generate it. We've written a PL SQL routine that run, reads the table structure, and we have encoded some other uh, disabled constraints to inform the data dictionary, and it generates that string for us so our ETL programmers when they're writing this, we're using Informatica, so they don't have to worry about dragging and dropping 500 columns into some kind of a string. We generate the string out of SQL, they cut and paste it into Informatica. And that eliminated all of the inconsistencies across all the ETL programmers where some of them were using carrots, some were using vertical bars, some of them were forgetting it all together, some were doing uppers, some were doing trims, some weren't doing any of it. And so we were getting things that wouldn't integrate, and wouldn't compare, right? And the QA people were going nuts. And this also gives a routine now the QA people can take it and put it into a SQL statement and go run it against the source themselves and see what result they get. And then look at the attribute that came out of the ETL and see if they get the same answer. So we've got a whole bunch of data quality feedback loops by being able to automate this, plus gives us standards, plus gives us consistency. And if you want to learn more about Data Vault, LearnDataVault.com. Uh, I oh, there's a Data Vault book also on LearnDataVault.com, and that's it. I'm Kent. KentGraziano.com, the Oracle Data Warrior. Thanks for coming.